You're listening to the weekly partial podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramah B'Shem Israel 5780, 2020. This week's parasha is Parshas Vayakal and Pikudei, and I'd like to share with you a thought that's connected to the parsha, of course, and something which I believe will help us in the challenge we are all facing with the worldwide situation. Patsik says, Kol Chacham Lev, there was a command God gave to Moshe Rabbeinu to ask all those who had the wisdom of heart in order to be able to create the different parts of the Mishkan, to create the Kalim, Betzalel, all kinds of craftsmen, people who had tremendous talents. And it's very interesting, this choice of words, Chacham Lev. Chacham means wise, Lev of heart. The Medrash tells us like this, something very strange at first, and when we begin to understand and examine the language precisely and carefully, we see there's an amazing concept that's going on here. What is the idea of The measure says this is what it means when it says in the verse, I am black and I am beautiful. It's the Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 5. What is the idea of black? Generally represents black with sin or, or black with something that's not beautiful. So what does it mean that I'm black and I'm beautiful? Says the measure, if you're black, if there's something wrong, if there's some discoloration here going on, so then what does it mean that it's beautiful? Is there something which is black? The word, the color black always represents negativity, uh, mourning, etc. How could it be black and also be beautiful? Knesset Yisrael says, and this is essential, Knesset Yisrael means the gathering, the, the congregation of Israel. We need to understand the concept of the gathering, the congregation of the people of Israel. What is that idea? We'll get to that soon. Amra Knesset Israel, the, the congregation of Israel says, Shreira ani b'maasai, v'nova ani b'maasa avoisai. I am black in my actions, and I'm beautiful when it comes to the actions of my grandparents, my great-grandparents. Meaning, there's a recognition on the part of the Jewish people that although I've done wrong, Nevertheless, Hashem sees me as beautiful because of the zechuyos, the merits of my great-grandparents, the Avais, Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov, their great merits, the Shvatim, the 12 tribes, the Jewish people, the sacrifice of the Jewish people throughout the generations. Even though we're not doing per se what we would like to be doing, there's a Shkhoir aspect, there's a black aspect, there's an aspect of, of non-beauty. Nevertheless, Hashem sees us as beautiful because He looks at the actions of our, our grandparents. That's one aspect of the Shreira and Ivanova, black and beautiful. How am I both? Like we said, because of my actions might be bad, but the actions of my grandparents were beautiful. Another example of it says the measure Shreira and Ivanova 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 and Ivanova. There's something that was, the, the Mephorshim here explained this slightly different than the language of the actual measure itself, but there was a blackness in Mitzrayim. There was something I did wrong in Mitzrayim, I served idolatry. And there was a beauty in Mitzrayim, which was that when Hashem said to, to take the Korban Pesach, to, to put the blood onto the doorposts, etc., to do the, the circumcision, the Mila, so I did those things. So there was a negative thing that I did, and there was something positive that I did. Okay? And I'm black, and I'm beautiful. I've done something wrong, and I'm also beautiful. I've done something dark, we could say, and I'm still beautiful. And also at, at Harsina, there was something negative, which was the Maisa Egel, which was the, the sin of the golden calf, which we spoke about last week. But there was also something positive, which was the fact that we said, Nasa ben Ishma, we said to God that we're willing to do the commandments even before we even heard what they were. Shechir ani al Yamsuf, there was something negative at Yamsuf. Shenem av al yam, al yam, bi Yamsuf, there was a rebellion. The Jewish people were afraid. As they saw the Egyptians coming, they were afraid. And therefore they rebelled against God. And nevertheless, after the amazing miracle, the splitting of the sea, the Jewish people said, Wow, this is my God and I will glorify Him. So something negative, uh, alongside something positive, in the same situation. There was something black, there was something negative about the fact that I served the idolatry of the, of the, of the Egel, and yet I rectified it, says Klal Yisrael. We rectified it with the Maisa Mishkon, with creating the Mishkon. 
Shrani Bashur, Shnavai Mir was Kavayin Batam Nashur, but Navani Bashur, Shari Kesavai Ais. There was something negative that was created with the concept of the ox, or the animal, which is the Egel, the, the Chet HaEgel, the sin of the golden calf, but it was rectified through the Shur, through the ox that was brought as a korban, as a sacrifice in the Mishkan. So we have the dual aspect, something negative alongside something positive. And the Medrash finishes off. An amazing thing that the Jewish people at a later time, the verse in Yechezkel, in Ezekiel chapter 23, verse, verse 38, the Jewish people did something negative. They were matami the Mishkan. They caused impurity in the temple. And yet there was a beauty in the Mishkan, which was the aspect of Chacham Lev, which we, set, which we mentioned at the beginning, the, the wise of heart, that there was an outpouring of a desire to give one's talents and one's craftsmanship to the Mishkan, to the Temple. Okay, that's the first part of the Medrash. And the Medrash needs understanding, of course, what is the idea, as we said, of Knesset Yisrael, of the gathering, the congregation of the people of Israel? What is the idea of this, this duality here where we have a negative thing that happens in the same place as something positive? And there's a rectification of sources, as the Mephorshim explained here in the Medrash. What is the idea? And how does that connect to Chacham Lev? What is the idea of, as we said at the very beginning, how does it connect to the idea of Chacham Lev, that there is a wise of heart? What is, what is this duality? Is there a duality here? And before I continue, I want to point out that there's a duality in Chacham Lev as well. The idea of Chachma is distinct from the idea of Lev. Lev is heart. Lev is emotion. And Lev is also Lev Maven, is the idea of Bina. The idea of intuitive understanding. Chachma is not intuitive understanding. Chachma, wisdom, is something which is beyond that. It's, it's, it's the, the raw wisdom itself. It's not something that I figured out. It's the, the letter of the law, so to speak. It's the concepts themselves. With Bina, with intuition, I'm able to apply those concepts to other places where I didn't know that they apply. But Chachma and Bina are different. Bina is intuitive. Bina is emotion. And Chachma is wisdom, raw intellect, beyond emotion. Okay, so, so there are really two different aspects that are coming together, which are opposite aspects in a certain sense. And I believe that that has to do with the idea here of shcher uh, of blackness and beauty, of darkness, darkness and spirituality, and yet alongside beauty. Okay, so that's just a hint to, a hint to, what's, to where we're headed. But we need to understand what is this duality, what is this contradistinction of beauty versus negativity, of wisdom versus uh, intuition, and what is the idea of Knesset Yisrael, as we said. Okay, so now the Medrash continues with also a very pleadic, uh, very uh, difficult to understand statements. Ma malacha yoisin, says the Medrash, what malacha were they doing? What was the idea of Chacham Lev? What was the malacha here? What was the the craftsmanship that was required, which involved Chacham Lev, which involved wisdom and involved intuition? So the measure says something which doesn't make sense at, at the first glance. Elar Eimaksiv, what does the pasuk say? V'zoy sa'truma sher tikhu me'itam. This is the truma. This is the offering that you are to take from them. Zokanes is Yisrael, Shehi Truma. This is the congregation of Israel. Again, the Medrash uses this language: the congregation of Israel, Shehi Truma, which is the the that which was donated. Shnei Merkayish Yisrael, Hashem Reishes to us. The Jewish people are called the first of God. We are the highest aspect of God. We are like the the Kohen, the priest of the nations. We are the ones who preach in a certain sense. Through our actions, through our good deeds, we are the ones who represent Hashem in the world. Okay, we are the racist to us, and we are the first. We are the ones that God donates, as it were, the first of the produce. That's what the Jewish people are. So very difficult to understand. What does it mean? What is the idea of the congregation of Israel coming together? And what is the idea that we are the first of God's truma? We are God's donation to the world, so to speak. And that's what it sounds like. And, and I'll mention also here, one of the Mephorshim and the Medrash explain that when the Jewish people, it wasn't just the money that they were giving as a, as a donation to the Mishkan, but rather, through giving that money, they were donating themselves. They were donating themselves. That also needs beer. We'll see if we can get to explaining that as well. 
Zav Chesav Zeknesis Yisrael. Measure says another difficult to understand statement. The gold and the silver that was given, this is the congregation of Israel. Shenemar Pasuk says, Kanfe Yoyin Nechba Bekesef. The Pasuk in Tehillim refers to the wings of a dove, which are covered with silver. And the Jewish people are referenced to as silver, they're referenced to as gold. The Mephorshim explain elsewhere where the Jewish people are, are referred to as a mushal. As an analogy, we're referred to as a dove. We are God's perfect dove. Silver, gold, covered with silver, covered with gold. What is the idea? When the Zayat Yisrael, the Medrash continues and says a further challenging statement, another challenging statement. Nechayshis, what was the Nechayshis? The bronze that was given to the Mishkan as a truma, as a donation? It's a reference to the land of Israel. The land of Israel from its mountains, you shall quarry bronze. Okay, so what is what is this stuff? What is the what is the silver and the gold here? Jewish people. What is the bronze? The land of Israel. Tchelis, there were other true mice, there were other things that were given. Tchelis was the blue dyed wool. Zokines is Israel. Says the Medish, what's the blue dyed wool represent? It also represents the Jewish people. Shinem of Anasno al Tzitzis Hakanof is the we are to put the blue wool, it represents us. This is our, this is our uh, uniform. The Jewish people's uniform is this blue dyed wool. So the blue dyed wool is the congregation of Israel, once again. And then the Medrash says, furthermore, our gamon, shani, these perp, the purple wools, the red wool, Zokinus is Israel. Again, it's the congregation of Israel. Shenemar, al Tiri Tolas Yaakov refers to the Jewish people as Tolas, Vichen Kechud Hashani, Sivsasayich. Refers to this this type of these types of wool, the Jewish people are referred to in this way. We've also found in regards to the argam on the, the the purple wool, that's the Jewish people. What is the idea here that all of the different aspects of the Mishkan represent the congregation of Israel, the coming together of the people of Israel? Last thing. Another possible explanation. What does the gold and the silver and the bronze represent? Zav za Avraham. It's Abraham. He went through the fiery furnace just like gold goes through a fiery furnace. He was tested. The Kesef, what's the silver? Ze Yitzchak. It's Isaac. He was placed upon the altar just like, just like silver. Or he was purified on the altar like silver is purified. And the bronze refers or represents Jacob. The Torah uses the word Laban when he realizes that it was Yitz, that it was Yaakov, sorry, who was bringing blessings into his house. He says, I was able to check out with my magic. And I saw that it was you. is the same word as Nechayshes, which means bronze. Of course, the Medrash is saying to us, please, learn me up. Try to understand what's going on. Try to understand what I'm trying to say. So let's try to understand what's going on here. And I think there's an amazing, deep idea here that's so powerful and so important for us to understand where we are and where we're headed and what we're trying, what, what should we be trying to focus on as we face off with this incredible event that's going on in the world, and I want to share with you just quickly, in one minute, my Rosh Hashiva said, Rabbi Per said, in a vod yesterday, which I listened to this morning, he said that we are witnessing an amazing, mind-boggling event in the world. We're witnessing an unparalleled event where the world is completely frightened. Because of its fear, all of the entire world is coming to a halt. All business, all financial things, everyone is hiding in their houses. Everything is coming to an amazing halt. It's, it's a historic moment. And we need to take heed. We need to realize it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God Himself, has come down into the world and placed the fear into all of our hearts. And we need to step back. And we need to recognize that. And we need to, to try to inculcate into ourselves the lessons that Hashem is trying to teach us. And what is the lesson? So I want to t- tell you a thought that I've been having Throughout this week, it's something that my wife said. She, she was ma'ayur, this idea in my mind. And there's something that's going on here. There's a shechera v'nova. There's something that's dark. 
There's something that's challenging and there's something that's beautiful going on at the same time. Shreira, it's so dark, it's so difficult, it's so hard to understand what's going on. And not just Mitzad, as I've mentioned previously, not just from the point of view of the fact that there are people getting sick, and there are, and there are people that we know. Not just that, but from the other side of it, there's something amazingly beautiful. And whether it's because now we have some time to be with our family, whether it's now we have some time to introspect and think, we must be by ourselves, out of the busyness of the world, out of the noise of the world. But there's something else, which I think is amazing, and if you're in Eretz Yisrael, you'll know that this is going on, and if you're not in Eretz Yisrael, you might not even be aware of it. But in Eretz Yisrael right now, we have been having the most rain, I think we've had, it might be in 50 years, or it might be in 100 years, the most rain that we've ever had, the Kinneri has filled up full to capacity, Already a month ago, and we've had rain since, they were talking about that they might be bringing up the dam to stop the water from overflowing. And the people of Tiveria, not only were they not worried about it, but they were ecstatic that they might be flooded because of so much rain. Now, it's a big kasha. It's very hard to understand. And if you think about it also in light of, of the, we were talking about two months ago, everything was, that was going on had to do with Trump's deal of the century, had to do with, we're finally going to annex all of the Jewish areas in the West Bank, you know, like that, that and Yehuda Abishamron, let's be precise, like that, that we've quieted down from that. We're not talking about that because we're all focused on the, on this, uh, the crazy things that are going on. But I just want to point out, and this is important, and this has to do with Chacham Leiv, has to do with wisdom versus intuition, and it has to do with Shechayr Venova, has to do with Knesset Yisrael. I'm going to explain very soon how it does. But side by side, Side by side, this is how Kaddish Baruch Hu does things. When there's a negative situation, when there's a situation which is tremendously difficult, Hashem places simanu, He places signs in our path which are obvious. And the only reason that we won't notice it is because our eyes are not open. That there's beauty alongside the darkness. It's so important. It's so essential right now, at this moment, it's not a coincidence that last week we read about the Egel, and this week we read about the Mishkan. And that's what this Medrash is saying. The Medrash is saying, number one, that when we, when we do a sin, when we do this incredible sin of the Ched HaEgel, but notice immediately afterwards, we rectify it with the Mishkan, with the, with the selfless giving that the Jewish people do. And by doing that, when we notice that, yes, there's negative, of course there is, yes, there's difficulty, yes, there's challenge, and I'm not minimizing it because I'm also facing it, just like everyone else, when it comes to the financial matters and the fear around causing anybody in our vicinity, our our parents, uh, anyone around us to get sick. So we have that fear, but alongside it, there are so many blessings. Baruch Hashem, we have family. Baruch Hashem, we have people to support us. Baruch Hashem, we have community. Even though our community might be, it's, it's hard to connect to, to the community right now, but we have community. Whether it's online, whether it's th- through the phone, whether it's through our WhatsApp groups, whatever it is, we have people who we can connect with and discuss and talk about these challenges. And we have rain. And the rain is, first of all, it represents the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is bringing to us financial prosperity. And here in Eretz Yisrael, I want to point out that it was just a few months ago that they started sending this natural gas, which is an incredible, incredible source of income for Eretz Yisrael, for the land of Israel. So side by side with Hashem pulling the rug out from under our feet, so to speak, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is also showing us signs that we got to keep our eyes open for them. Shechayrani v'nava. There's, there's negative things going on here. There are, there are perhaps, uh, you know, we, we can't understand why it's going on. You know, there's, there's negativity. There's the Averis that we've done. There's the, the Aver of the Chet Egel, And there's our current Averis. Personally, every single one of us needs to think about that. And we need to, just like a Kaddish Baruch who shows us, hey, there's financial problems going on, but I promise you, I'm showing you Simanim, of financial prosperity also for the Jewish people. We got to look out for that in our own personal lives in our own personal challenges, we need to see and look for the place where Hashem is helping us. There's the Shechayrani Vinova. And here's where we get to the idea of Chacham Lev. Chacham Lev. Chachma and Bina. 
are two opposite spectrums. One we could call the male wisdom, the Gemara wisdom, the intellectual wisdom, the way halacha, the way it's supposed to be. And then we have the female wisdom, which is the intuition, which is the understanding of things, reading between the lines, also knowing where to, to step back and not be so tough. Right? The father is the one who's very tough, makes the rules. The mother, I'm saying generally speaking, the mother is the one who says, oh, come, you got, you got a patch, come, my little dear, I'm going to give you a hug, I'm going to give you a kiss. Oy, 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 oy. We have the Chochmah and we have the Bina. We have the raw wisdom and we have the intuitive wisdom, the craftsmanship that comes from the side of Bina, the, the music, the art, all of these things. And they seem to be a clash. They seem to be a clash. They seem to be a stira. Now in the Beis Hamikdash we have something called Knesset Yisrael. Knesset Yisrael is a bringing together of these opposite aspects, these opposite forces, the male force and the female force. Chachma, Bina, coming together, we have Knesset Yisrael. We have the bringing together of all the different parts of Kla Yisrael, all the different pieces, each one with their special talents. We have the wise people, we have the not-so-wise people, we have the talented people, we have the not-so-talented people. We have all different parts of Kla Yisrael come together. That's called Knesset Yisrael. It's the back and forth. It's the Shechairani. It's the negative things that we've done side by side with the positive things that we've done. And we have both of those things. We come into this world, and in order to have Bechir, in order to have free choice, we have to be able to choose what's wrong. And we also have to be able to rectify that. And there's a back and forth. There's something that we've done wrong, and there's something that we do to rectify it. There's this back and forth, and there's a coming together of the opposite forces that's represented by the Shechairani Vigam Nava. I've done something wrong, and I've also done something right. And we're asking at Kodesh Baruch Hu to look at the positive. Hashem, yes, we've done the, the Chet HaEgel. Yes, we've done what's wrong. But look at the Mishkan. Look, we've done, we were, we were, Zari Mitzrayim. we served idolatry in Egypt. But look, we said, we, we did this mitzvah of the Karban Pesach. Yes, at, at Har Sinai, we did the Chet HaEgel. But at Har Sinai, we also said, Nasa Nishma, focus on the positive. Focus on the good, the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Look at the good. Look at the good. Yes, there's tough times happening and it's, it's, it's not so clear when it's going to get better. Yes, there's tough times, but look at the good just like we want Hashem to look at our good. Hashem wants us to look at the good that's going on. That's what's going on in the second part of the Medrash as well. Klal Yisrael is, Klal Yisrael is the Knesset Yisrael, the gathering together of the, the opposite aspects that's, how, that's where we are. We are that brought together aspect. I can't really explain this point. I, I believe I've gone into it at length in, in uh, speaking about Yaakov Avinu as the, the all-inclusive aspect and in speaking about Kalal Yisrael as the all-inclusive aspect of all of the nations. That's the idea of the number 71. Yaakov is the 71st. Kalal Yisrael is the 71st. It's the all-inclusive aspect. I can't get into it at length right here. But it's, it's, it is the concept of Knesset Yisrael is this bringing together of all of the pieces. Kalal Yisrael is the light unto the nations. It's the soul of the nations. That's what the Jewish people is. And that's the truma. The truma is giving of ourselves, coming together in the Mishkan. It's the highest aspect. It's the taiv. It's the good that we want HaKadosh Baruch Hu to see in us. And we want Hashem to see in all of the nations, that's Kalal Yisrael, we are the light in the nations, and it's, it's the light that the nations are supposed to follow. And it's also what Eretz Yisrael is. Eretz Yisrael is the, the place where everything comes together in the entire world. The, all of the Shefa, all of the goodness that Hashem wants to send down into the world, the influx, it also comes into the world through Eretz Yisrael. Through the, this is the place where it's the, the combined place. It's a place of combining, of coming together. This aspect of chacham, chacham, lev. Wisdom, intuition, coming together. It's the aspect of Knesset Yisrael. It's tcheles, it's milash and kol. It's all-inclusive. Interestingly, I, I haven't really thought about it, but somehow it's in the sargamon, in the blue, in the, in the purple wool, to Lashani, the red wool, etc., there's an all-inclusive aspect in that, and that's who Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov were. They were the progenitors of the Jewish people. They were the they contained within them all of the spiritual kochos, the spiritual powers that would eventually manifest through the twelve tribes of the people of Israel and through the six hundred thousand souls of the people of Israel. That coming together of all of those souls, all those aspects, focusing on the positive, 
focusing on the positive in each and every person around us. Now is a time of challenge. Now is a time when it's easy to become upset because we don't have our needs per se. Now is a time when it's easy to, we're disconnected from all those around us in a certain sense. And therefore, in, in a physical sense, and therefore it's so important to focus on the positive, to focus on all the things that are good in our lives, to focus on the fact that we have our families, to focus on the fact that we have our health, to focus on the fact, you know, if you look at the numbers, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. The people who get it, a 10%, 10% of the people are dying. But 90% of the people are fine. 90%. That's a lot of good. That's a lot of good. And it's, and it's so easy to focus on that small percentage, which is bad. Akadosh Baruch Hu is saying, Shechira, Klai Yisrael says, Shechira Nivanova. There's darkness and there's beauty. Focus on the beauty. Focus on the good. Focus on the rain. Focus on the plenty. Focus on the positive things in your lives. I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us to be able to indeed recognize the, the nova, the beauty that's there. Recognize that, that the part of life is this up and down. And that even if we're in a state of down right now, there's always a promise. It's a Yerida Litzarech Aliyah. We're going down in order to get to an even higher place at a future point. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.